Welcome back to comicbook.com, everybody. BD here, and right now I'm joined by the Walking Dead cast, Eleanor Matsura, Kari Payton, Yumiko, and Ezekiel, respectively. Guys, thanks for uh, hanging out for a couple minutes here on the virtual Comic-Con week. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Of course. So listen, I want to start out by the fact that this is the, the beginning of the end. It's so weird to think that The Walking Dead, the main show, is coming to an end. So when you first went back to set, like when you guys started filming the premiere and, and beyond, you know, did you guys do anything special to kick it off? Has it set in? Like, what's the energy like? I mean, it was ex- it was exciting to come back, but but uh, but everybody had to keep their distance. So so, you know, we couldn't. We couldn't have a big banana party. You know, we couldn't bring all the, you know, we couldn't bring all the fruits and vegetables. We, we, we had to, we had to just, uh, you know, keep our, keep our collective fruit bowls to ourselves. And, and it was, you know, it was upsetting, you know, in that sense, because, you know, we're, we're all, we're all used to being very much on top of each other. You a know what I mean? Salad, if you will. Yes, exactly. And yeah. so, you know, and, and the cherries had to stay over there. The, you know, the pomegranates, you know, had their own little corner. It was it was it was sad in that sense. But yet the fruit was still there. We could see the fruit. You couldn't touch the fruit. You couldn't hug the fruit. And I think I, and, and I, I think any good fruit lover wants to hug his fruit before, you know, you partake. It. So so that so that that was difficult. And and um, and honestly, it's still uh, a little uh, hard to get used to because we're, um you know, th- this this this. Uh, this is this pandemic is like, you know, a horrible, deadly cold that won't go away. You know, it's like, you know, it, it just it just keeps lingering. And um, and, uh, you know, so, you know, we, we still are taking precautions. So it's um, so we, we are far from back to normal. But, uh, but I, I hope that by the end of the uh, of the show that we'll actually be able to really get together and and truly see each other's faces and and, and have and, and finally have that that reunion that we really want. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I know I speak for a lot of the fans when I say we, we appreciate the fact that you guys are taking time away from your families during all this and and creating this show for us to watch and enjoy uh, and to go on this ride with you. So thank you for that. Uh, uh, Eleanor, I want to come to you because we got a we got a taste of Yumiko's reaction to the Commonwealth in the bonus episodes. Uh, mm-hmm. I know you can't say too much, but but Yumiko is a, is a very logical, qu- quick thinker. Uh, what's that? What's that introduction be like? Is there any sort of trust there going forward? Trust with her, right? Her in terms of the Commonwealth, or These like people, people this this group of of stormtroopers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I think. I think, you know, we're stepping into territory here, which is like absolutely unknown. Whenever we come across a community, you know, it's like we have to scout them out. We have to find out if they're on our side, good guys, bad guys, etc. But this is really new. Like when the troopers show up and they're in that, like their outfits and that uniform, it's just like, this is when we know that we're not dealing with just sort of like your regular survivors that you meet on the road. They're coming from somewhere else. Um, and the crazy thing about that is that you start to see Yumiko kind of tap back into a skill that we, she hasn't needed before in the apocalypse. Like she's always been a survivor and she's always been really good with a bow and arrow and she's always been down with her group and, and she's, she's good like that. But we, we heard a little bit in last season that she was a lawyer. This time you're like, you, you know, you can find out just how good she used to be at her job. And Ooh. she has this whole skill set that she never needed in the past 12 years in the apocalypse. Like no one needed somebody who's quick witted and smart and can think on their feet and is good at paperwork and like understand how to get around certain laws. Like all of that went out the window. And now suddenly she's been given this opportunity to really flex that muscle. And we're gonna see her really come into her full, full strength in a way that's never been seen before, I think. So I can't say too much of my thoughts on those first two episodes that I've seen so far, but I know what you're talking about. And you did, you were awesome in that, in that oh, sort of role. It was really cool. It was really cool. Uh, I, was, I, was, I was trying to channel Aaron Brockovich in one of those scenes. And that will make sense when you see it. Yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. And Kari, I want to talk about Ezekiel. This is a character who for a while now has really been battling with accepting his mortality. It's been, I mean, all characters in this world are, 
But for Ezekiel, even more so, it's in his face with the cancer he's fighting. And first of all, as somebody who has watched their own mother go through such a battle uh, and, and seeing what that puts somebody through and the things they have to think about, uh, I want to thank you for how respectfully you play that part. Uh, but I also just want to hear from you, man. What is the psyche going in? Like, where's Ezekiel at when he sees, like, there might be this larger world, but he also has this issue that he's kind of trying to get through himself. Yeah, it's um, it's it's it does hit close to home. It hits close to home for me as well. My my dad is uh, has been uh, battling cancer for for seven years now, so it's it's uh, it's very um, you know near and dear to me. And I I I see in Ezekiel this this uh, this push and pull when it comes to to uh, staying positive. And uh, and yet and yet being being present to his uh, to his reality, you know, it's uh, that you know that you can you can uh, you you can be as, as positive as you, as you want, but still but be be in the moment, you know. And to be in the moment is to acknowledge that there is something going on, and uh, and and there there are these. Man, I didn't expect I didn't expect to uh, get th this. Uh, uh, get uh, emotional about it but um but there are but there are those times that that uh they you know like like with you with my with your mom and 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 me with my dad my my dad is uh you know he's he's stubborn and he's tough and he uh and he's a fighter and he jokes through all of the all of this stuff and then every once in a while he uh I turn to him and I see him with his head in his hands you know and I, and I, you know, and, 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 or, or, or his head in his fists, you know, and, and, um, and he's just, he's just taken a moment with himself to, to breathe. And you can feel, you can feel the, the hurt and the pain wafting off of him. And it's like, and, and, I uh, and there's nothing you can say and there's nothing you can do. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, positive or not, pain is pain. And, uh, and, and you got, you got to have a moment to feel that to, and, uh, be able to, uh, to let it go. And, um, and that's what I'm trying to channel with, with Ezekiel is, is, uh, is the, the fact that he is, that he is, uh, trying to keep his head up and trying to be, you know, that, that positive light for, for other people and for himself and yet acknowledging, you know, the, the reality of, uh, of, of pain that just won't go away, you know? Yeah, it's 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 so interesting to hear you talk about that because I feel like I've gone through something very similar. And I mean, yeah, our yeah. parents are warriors, man. My mom's the toughest person I know. She's all good yeah. now. And I'm sending my best to your dad to come out the same way. Thanks, brother. Of course, of course. Uh, I, 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 no easy way to transition out of something so heavy, but uh, I, I genuinely just want to thank you for sharing such personal, such personal insight like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn down. I mean, that's now. the cool thing. That's the cool thing, though, about the this uh, this experience in this show is that I. Uh, is that um is that we we are in we are in an absurd world, an apocalypse world of zombies that that I uh, you know you know but but fantasy and science fiction the beauty of that of it is it takes the, these these ab absurdities and uh and 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 we're able to layer in you know that that uh, that reality that uh that that makes it a little more accessible to everybody so it's a it's it's a blessing and it, you know and you know and and cathartic. You know, yeah, to I, be that's able to... my favorite thing about the show too, Kari. I, I think when it reflects what's happening outside, and then if you get like a performance like yours, which roots it in something really authentic and real, it, it elevates the show into something different for me beyond, you know, a horror show. It becomes yeah. about mm -hmm. personal stories. And, and, and I think that's why it's lasted so long, because yeah. it ends up, it's, it's about those, those personal stories and the... Uh, you know, and uh, and yeah, and, and then there's blood spatter on the walls and you're like, oh yeah, there's your transition. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can always transition yeah. with a little blood on the wall. You know, yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's this crazy apocalyptic world, but it still has those personal roots. And I think that is a huge reason why we why we identify with it. And I mean, on that note, my question for you, Eleanor, was about we've seen these kind of teases in the trailers and the promos for this final season of uh, of Yumiko kind of finding maybe a family member, which would be a story from the comics. Maybe that maybe we're looking too far into it. Maybe that's something that's at, what would it mean this many years into the apocalypse to reunite with somebody who, who has been thought lost for, for all these years. Right. What would that mean? I mean, here's the thing. 
it kind of feeds ex into exactly what Kari was just sort of touching upon there, which is about how what we love about the show reflects in real life. I understand now what it's like to be apart from someone for a year and not able to see them. So it's not hard to imagine what it must be like if we were gonna do the maths in the context of the show. I think it would be at least 15 years that Yumiko would have seen her family based on the backstory that like I've worked out with Angela and um, how, what my journey would have been finding Magna and getting her out of jail and it, the, the education I had would have taken me up to a certain age. So, so yeah, in terms of the apocalypse, it's been, we've at least been 12 years on the road in this show. So if someone from my past is going to resurface, it's going to be at least 15 years that I've been apart from them, which is pretty huge. I mean, <laughs> yeah. obviously it's awesome, but I've, I'd also be a bit nervous hooking up with somebody after 15 years. It, yeah, that, that people can change. You never know. So it might not be that easy if it does happen. I'm excited to see what happens there. Uh, and my last thing for both of you, have they told you how it all ends? Do the, is that information available to you guys? I don't want to know what the, if, if you know. You know what? You know what? Normally, I would say, uh, I would say, you know what? How dare you ask that question, Brandon? You know, screw you and the horse you rode here in on. I'm trying to, you know, because because I, I was always trying to keep my job, you know. But now we're so close to the end. I'm like, you know what? Go, you could kill me. I, I don't even care. But I will tell you that they that they did tell me, I uh, I uh, how that how this winds up, and uh, and I am I am so excited for it. Oh. And I I love that I have that. I love that I have this secret. I was going to say the same thing. I'm like, I have no, I am going to be the smuggest person you've ever, I am walking around. I'm like, I know how it ends. Mm -hmm. I have all the information. It's yes. so funny you get to revel in it. So like, you know, let's, let, let's have this guys. I have, I have no qualms with enjoying it. Oh my God. I know do you end. know, do you know how many like 14 year old kids have come up to me and we're like, do you know how you're going to die? I know how you're going to die. And, and, and I just had to sit there and just take it because I knew that I, I was going to yeah. gonna get past those, those spikes, you know, those, my, my head on a spike. And these little, little little punks coming over there, like, hey, 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 hey. and now I've got something on. I've got, I've got, I've got the goods. This is no. your time, baby. This is your time to shine. I'm living oh. the dream. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in Puerto Vallarta. I'm having. <laughs> this is my pina colada. <laughs> uh, exactly. Eleanor Carr, I've got to let you guys go. Listen, thank you so much for coming on and talk about The Walking Dead with me. It's always a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to talking with you guys down the road uh, and throughout this final season. Thank you so much. It's Thanks. great, man. Great to have you uh, back uh, and, and, and just back in this little loop that, that we've been doing. We're really, uh, you're, you're one of the first people that interviewed me uh, when I when I uh, started uh, this uh, this walking dead journey so so it's uh yeah it's it's kind of crazy to to think we were we were in atlanta at the convention center mm -hmm. uh you know during that during my first big atlanta com comic-con convention with uh with the walking dead and uh and we just you know sat there as most people walked by and had no idea who i w even was yet and uh and you were just uh you were excited for me because you knew what was coming and I truly had no idea. So this is cool. Yeah, that, dude, that, I remember that. I remember that very vividly, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm looking forward to this, this, this last ride with you guys and beyond and, go, and, and wherever we all go beyond this show. Yes, sir. Definitely. Right. Thank you for having us. Of course. Thanks, Biddy. Be good, man. Later, guys.